Have you ever wanted a ground build that makes it feel like you're commanding a small army? Then maybe check this out. This is what I'm calling the I have an army build. This is another build idea that was offered to me by one of the members of the channel. The idea of this build is to create as many humanoid pets as you possibly can. This means the captain's ability security escort is going to be invaluable here, so this is going to be best suited for a tactical character. Though if you're wanting something kind of like this but better suited to an engineer, maybe check out my old drone fabricator build. This build, however, is more focused on generating humanoid pets, or at least humanoid presenting pets. There are three different kit modules you can use to summon some sort of humanoid pet. The first one is Assimilate, and as the name suggests, this will allow you to assimilate heavily targets and turn them into Borg drones that will follow your commands. However, there is a catch, and that is that this kit module will only work on humanoid non-Borg targets. So there are certain TFOs where this really isn't going to be that helpful, but in a number of other TFOs, this can actually be very powerful. The next kit module is called Holographic Deceiver. Remember Ardra from the TNG episode Devil's Do? This kit is basically inspired by her and her technology. In fact, the hologram this kit module summons actually looks like Ardra herself. What this module does is it summons a holographic deceiver that will taunt nearby enemies, which is anything within 15 meters, and it can reflect some of the damage done to it back to the enemy that dealt it. So it's kind of like a hologram with a built-in feedback pulse. The next kit module is called Freelance Security Detachment. This one functions a little bit like Security Escort, except it builds up charges. Each charge represents a security officer that will beam down when you activate this kit, maxing out at 4 total. So, let this one build up for long enough, and that's four security officers you can beam down with a press of a button. Now, the other three kit modules on the build don't have the ability to summon any additional pets. However, they were picked for their ability to improve the first three kit modules. Timeline Stabilizer is something I use on pretty much all of my ground builds due to its ability to lower the cooldowns of my other kit modules. Its cheat death mechanic is also really helpful for survival. Motivation is a team buff, but this one is mainly here because of its weird interaction with Assimilate. If you use Motivation while Timeline Stabilizer is active, it will further lower the cooldown of Assimilate. This interaction actually used to be quite overpowered when Assimilate was first released, because how much Motivation reduced the cooldown of Assimilate would depend on how many other friendly targets were affected by Motivation. So one day Cryptic decided to quietly nerf Motivation by significantly reducing its range, making it much more difficult to spam Assimilate like it used to be able to do. At least I'm pretty sure that's how that went down. Regardless, this is still a rather useful kit module for the sake of reducing the cooldown of Assimilate. It's not as good as it used to be, but, I mean, cooldown reduction is still cooldown reduction. The last kit module on here is called Collective Will. What it does is shoot a burst of electrical damage at a designated target. That electrical damage will be buffed by 20% for every ally that's nearby you, maxing out at 200%. This includes pet and NPC allies, so the more pets that you're able to summon, the more powerful this electrical damage is going to be. So this kit module can be really good for large single-hit targets against large, tanky, boss-level enemies. Now, for kit frames, there really aren't any with a proc that will summon a humanoid pet. There are a small number that can summon non-humanoid pets, like this Borg Combat Structure Kit, but for the sake of the theme, you can really just go with whatever you want, or rather, whatever you can afford. Really, the important thing with a kit frame is to get as much kit performance mods as you possibly can on it. This can be a huge pain in the butt because most kit frames cannot be re-engineered. So, for the sake of your budget, your best option for a kit frame is probably one of the Ryzean kit frames. Even though I'm not using any Ryzean kit modules, that frame is still one of the few kit frames that can be re-engineered. For the armor, I am using the Torchbearer armor. This was part of an event prize from a while back, so if you missed out on that, sorry. But if you did have this event, that means you have this unlocked on your whole account, and the reason I'm using it is because of its special ability, Torchbearer Assault Squad. Which is just a click ability that summons in two Klingons that will fight at your side for 20 seconds. I'm using both the normal armor and the EV suit because both have this ability. So I'll be able to use this whether I'm in a normal combat environment or somewhere that needs an EV suit, like Nukara. For the shield, I'm using the Nakul Temporal Operative Personal Shield. This one is a reward from the episode Temporal Front. This is another one I use on a lot of my ground builds due to its time slip ability. When the shield drops below 10%, it'll summon a level 75 distortion for 10 seconds. For the duration this distortion is active, you will be immune to all damage and invisible to enemies but the distortion is meant to resemble the player character, so it does kind of feed into the theme of the build of having as many humanoid pets as possible. I wasn't able to find any ranged weapons that summon in any additional pets, humanoid or otherwise. So for my main weapon, I'm just using the same weapons that I always use. In the case of this character, it's the Assimilated Plasma Dual Pistols, which drop from the lockboxes and can be bought on the exchange. 
There's no real reason I'm using these ones specifically beyond the fact that I just think they look cool. Melee weapons, however, had something to offer for this theme, because the Emperor's Sword from the Lobi store has a tertiary attack called Terran Assault Squad. It's basically the same thing as the Torchbearer Assault Squad on the armor. It summons in two security officers, they fight for you for 20 seconds, and then disappear. The only difference is that these ones will look like Discovery Era Terrans. So what I typically do is use my main weapon for most of combat, but I do periodically switch over to the Emperor's Sword for the sake of summoning the Assault Squad. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt because you can't really tell where the cooldown is of Assault Squad while you're using your other weapon. So there is some guesswork involved there, but at the same time it is still two pets that you wouldn't have otherwise. And like I said, there aren't any ranged weapons with this sort of ability. The only other option would be to commit to this fully as a melee build, but then I would be losing out on some of my pet summoning kit modules. For the devices, most of these are focused on summoning a pet. First is Shard of Possibilities. This used to be a very old event reward, but is now currently only available in Mud's Market. This will summon in two pets that look identical to you, and they will fight along your side. Additionally, when summoned, they will trigger a Confuse that will affect up to 10 targets within 15 meters. Next is the Synth Android A600 series. This is another past event reward, though it is not yet available in Mud's Market. But give it time, it'll show up there eventually. This one summons in a single android, it uses the laser cutting tool that you saw in Star Trek Picard, it can also perform a melee attack, and has the ability to taunt foes. Next is the newest piece of gear on this entire build, the Anaphasic Plasma Candle. This was the reward from this year's Halloween event. Activating this will summon the Anaphasic Entity, which will look much like Ronin from the episode Sub Rosa. He'll stick around for 60 seconds and has the ability to shoot lightning out of his hands, but he can actually stick around even longer by possessing the dead body of one of your fallen foes. Next is the gambling device from the Lobi store, which can also be obtained on the exchange. This is just here for the buffs to crit chance and crit severity. Alternatively, you could also go with the rainbow triple from the summer event. That also gives some nice buff to crit chance and is more budget friendly. And the last device on here is the Poven Healing Crystal. This is a reward from the episode Illusion of Communication. This is a heal ability. It works a lot like a hypo spray, but it's not a consumable item. It'll also apply to the whole team when activated, so that's kind of nice. But just like a hypospray, this has the chance to trigger a medic duty officer, which can summon a medic NPC that'll follow you around and try to heal you. For the skill specializations, I'm not using anything special here, just intel as my primary and temporal as my secondary like I always do. Technically commando would be the better secondary, but commando has no space skills and that means you would have to be switching between specializations between ground and space, which is kind of impossible when you're doing random TFOs because you have no way of knowing if you're going to get ground or space. And frankly, no one prioritizes their ground build over their space builds. But I like to use Temporal as my secondary because it offers something for both ground and space. For the sake of ground combat, Temporal is giving me access to Inevitability, which is speeding up the recharge time of my kit modules. For the personal traits, there really isn't much that offers any sort of benefit to the theme of this build. Though there are still a couple, and that's at least something. The first is Security Detail, and this will allow my security escorts to throw grenades. What type of grenades they throw will depend on what faction you are. Romulans will get plasma grenades, and I'm pretty sure the rest of them will get photon grenades. The other personal ground trait that fits the theme of this build is hollow decoys. Taking damage during combat will cause four hollow decoys to deploy. These decoys can't attack anything, but they will taunt nearby enemies. The hollow decoys will all look identical to your character, so that's how they fit into the theme. That's more humanoid pets being triggered. There is another personal trait I want to shout out just because I know if I don't someone's going to yell at me about it in the comments. Hive defenses. Taking damage has a 15% chance to spawn a Herc Attendant, maxing out at 3 total attendants. The reason I didn't use this personal trait is because it doesn't fit the theme of the build of spawning humanoid pets. The Herc aren't humanoid, the attendants are small insect-like creatures. I say small, but I mean they're like the size of a dog, which is terrifyingly huge for an insect, but in terms of stow NPCs they're fairly small. Now, while the rest of my ground personal traits aren't key to the theme of this build, I'll go over the rest of them anyway just because it's been ages since I've done a ground build on the channel. Adaptive Offense, which is a crit chance buff that turns into a crit severity buff and back. It works just like the space trait of the same name. Creative for the kit performance. Kit performance is a very important ground skill because it determines the damage of your kit modules. Dolce et Decorum Est, which is a bonus damage buff until you die, then it becomes a damage resistance buff until you change maps. Field Technician for the buff to kit readiness. That's the skill that improves the cooldowns of your kit modules. Hive Mind is really only going to benefit you during TFOs. It grants a bonus damage buff for every teammate that is within 20 meters of you. That bonus is doubled, however, if said teammate is also using Hive Mind. Lucky for the buffs to crit chance and exposed chance. Upgraded gear gives a stacking kit performance buff based on every foe that you defeat, which can stack up to plus 50 but will reset upon moving maps or being defeated. 
Terran Vision for the crit severity buff. It's literally just the ground version of Terran targeting systems. And Vicious, which will give a buff to you bonus damage and crit severity that'll stack over time. And for the ground reputation traits, again, there's really nothing in here that's going to help with pets, but I'll go over these just because it's been ages since I've done a ground build. Lethality for the crit chance buff. Deadly Aim for the crit severity buff. Magnified Armaments for the bonus all damage. Personal Energy Amplifier for the bonus damage buff to my kits. And if I had the last slot unlocked here, I would use Omega Weapon Proficiency for the bonus damage buff to my energy weapons. Moving on to the duty officers, some of these are going to be pretty obvious. You're going to want three security officers that have a chance to beam down an additional escort when using security escort. Each one has a 20% chance of triggering, but their effects do stack, meaning you'll have a chance to trigger multiple additions to your security escort. This duty officer effect isn't unique, so you can actually find a number of these just by leveling up your duty officer tracks. They can also drop randomly from the vendor on the fleet starbase, or you can find them on the exchange. Same with the medic down here, this one isn't a unique effect either. Though for Federation faction characters, they'll be called nurses. But with this, anytime I activate a hyperspray, I have a chance to beam down a medic that will provide additional medical support. And remember, the pop and healing crystal counts as a hypospray, so that can trigger this duty officer. Next is Schroeder, the randomly transporting Saurian. This one is a unique duty officer. He drops from the infinity lockboxes, but you can also find him on the exchange. With this duty officer equipped, activating any kit module will grant a 5% chance of beaming down Schroeder, the randomly transporting Saurian, where he will then fight alongside you like any other combat pet. The last one isn't part of the theme, but this is Elder Malakatan, who is rewarded from the Gamma Recruitment event. He's here because he gives a small damage buff that applies on both ground and space. Now, before we move on to the combat log analysis, I want to complain about something. Certain duty officers have certain restrictions. Certain duty officers you can put a maximum of three, some you can only put a single one on your build. I get why these restrictions are here, you want to encourage some amount of variety into the duty officers. But the problem is that these restrictions apply on both ground and space at the same time. So because I have three security officers here on my ground build, I can no longer put any security officers in my space build. Now this actually isn't a new thing, but it used to be that the loadout system used to override this restriction. So as long as those security officers were saved to a loadout on one of my ships, activating that loadout would activate those duty officers, even if I already exceeded the restriction on the ground side. But that seems to have been patched out at some point, and frankly, I am annoyed, because it is a really stupid restriction. In every other aspect of the game, ground and space are completely separate from each other. So why is it different for the duty officers? Obviously, I have no answers here, so we're going to move on to the combat log.
723 DPS. It's really not bad for a ground build. It's by no means record breaking, but it's more than enough to get you through elite level content. You can see that the pets did most of the DPS on the build, which is kind of what you want on a pet focused build. My normal weapon's doing 190 DPS, which again, not bad. Yeah, there are better weapons than the dual pistols that I'm using, and that would have done a little bit better on the DPS, but at the same time, it really doesn't matter all that much. I'm just using them because I like them. Collective Will did 100 DPS, which doesn't sound as impressive as the other two, but keep in mind that the main reason we're using Collective Will is more for its one-hit potential rather than overall DPS. And as you can see, it's doing its job because it had a max one-hit of over 6,000 damage. Now, these grenades are actually from the pets. So I don't really know why their damage is showing up as mine, but that also means that the pets actually did more damage than it actually appears to be. Looking at the pet damage, Freelance Security Detachment seems to be the big winner at 67 DPS. Though if you add the 54 DPS from those plasma grenades to the Security Escort, which I'm pretty sure is where those plasma grenades are coming from, then the Security Escorts actually did 68.76 DPS. So close to being able to say nice. Anaphasic Entity did a bit better than I thought at 22 DPS. It's not amazing, but it's still not bad for a device. Technically, the android did just as good, because these are two separate activations of the android. The device spawns a number of different androids with different names, so the combat log reads them as different entities, that's why they're separated like this. The holographic deceiver only did about 8.5k, which is not great for a kit module. But its damage is reliant on enemies shooting at it, and, well, frankly, things die pretty quickly whenever I'm playing Stowe, so it really probably didn't get much chance to do much. Plus, couple that with the fact that I've also got other things that are also taunting enemies, mainly the holographic decoys trait, so it really just feels like that the holographic deceiver isn't getting the chance to do its full amount of potential. But obviously the problem is you don't want to wait that long just for the sake of one kit module. Frankly, the only reason this one is even here on the build in the first place is because I couldn't find any other kit modules that will generate a humanoid combat pet. But for the sake of the DPS of the total build, it might be smarter to swap this out for something like Baul Obelisk or the Watcher Robots. And at that point, you may as well throw on that Herc trait. So yeah, that is my I have an army ground build. I was thinking about following this up with a we have a Hulk ground build, but then I quickly realized that's just a melee build, and I actually already have one of those on the channel. If you want to check out that build, it'll be popping up in the right hand corner of the video, or you can just find it in the ground builds playlist. To make that build more Hulk themed, just be sure to swap in all three pieces from the ground set from the Discovery Legends reputation. But yeah, be sure to let me know what you thought of this build down in the comments below, and while you're down there, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. If you'd like to further support the channel, you can hit that join button to become a member, or hit the super thanks button, or find the link to the merch store in the video's description. If you're ever shopping on the Epic Game Store, be sure to use my content creator code STU1701, doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help me out, that is Epic Content Creator Code STU1701. Either way though, thank you so much for watching, my name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time!